Hello and welcome. You're watching To The Point. Indian schools in both houses of parliament observed a two-minute silence today in solidarity with Pakistan after yesterday's horrendous terrorist attack in Peshawar. This was after Prime Minister Modi rang up his Pakistani counterpart to personally express his sympathy and concern. The Prime Minister also called for both countries to join hands to decisively and comprehensively defeat terror. So how should we interpret this response from India? That's the discussion in part two. But first, was yesterday's attack on the army school in Peshawar one more consequence of Pakistan's failure to effectively tackle the Taliban? Or is it a response to Operation Zarbe Azab, which over the last five months has hit the Taliban hard, forcing this desperate attack? And beyond that, what message is the Taliban trying to send by this attack? Those are two of the questions I shall put to the world's greatest authority on the Taliban, the renowned author of The Taliban, as well as Pakistan on the Brink, Ahmed Rashid. Ahmed Rashid, let's start with yesterday's horrific attack on the Army Public School in Peshawar, which left 141 people dead, including 132 children. The Pakistani newspaper Dawn says several bodies were decapitated. Many of the young children were shot straight in the head. In your estimation, is this the worst massacre of children in the history of Islamic terrorism? Well, certainly, uh, you know, there was an, uh, an attack on school by the Chechens in 2004 in Chechnya, uh, but the, the, the uh, casualties in Afghanistan and Pakistan for the last 10, 12 years, we haven't seen anything like this. Now, the Tariqe Taliban has claimed responsibility, and it emerges that they seem to know the layout of this school very well. For instance, they knew the principal's room, they knew the auditorium, they knew the canteen. Are you surprised by how well prepared they were and how carefully planned this operation was? No, I don't think anybody's surprised because uh, all the major Taliban attacks have been inside jobs in the sense that they attacked uh, the general headquarters of the army, they've attacked the naval headquarters, they've attacked uh, ISI uh, offices. Uh, and they always seem to have had, uh, it is not a surprise, but of course, um, it is devastating to know that uh, the Taliban's intelligence is, is, is still, um, you know, very great and they have access uh, to all these institutions. Are you suggesting that in fact the Taliban has people who are collaborating or cooperating from inside the system, which makes them therefore all the more deadly and all the more effective? Is that what you're suggesting? Yes, I think that's absolutely correct. I mean, we know, for example, in the attack on the Karachi airport that there were uh, uh, military personnel who were, uh, um, uh, had, had given retired military personnel who had given the Taliban information on the naval dockyard. Um, uh, there were ex-Navy people who took part in the assault even uh, and who knew the naval dockyard. And I'm sure it wouldn't have been difficult uh, to, given uh, this huge school uh, with all the security guards and chokidars and, and people working in the school uh, to get information about the school. Now, the Taliban issued a statement. It was issued by their spokesman, Mohammed Khursani, and they claim that they sent six attackers. But the Pakistani journalist, Mariana Biber, says that, in fact, the army has taken out nine militants. And Dawn newspaper, this morning says that there could have been as many as 16 attackers and a few might even have escaped. Does this diversity in numbers, this range, suggest that we don't have a clear picture either of what happened or possibly also of who was responsible? Well, uh, you know, I think that's very much the case. Uh, uh, we've had now, the army has been taking journalists around uh, the school building and, uh, 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 and showing uh, on TV, you can see pictures of the burnt out rooms uh, and where the explosions took place. The problem is that uh, whether it was six or nine, uh, they were all wearing suicide uh, uh, belts. They exploded themselves. Uh, some of them uh, in the midst of the students, some of them uh, were shot by the army commanders and then exploded. Um, so there's, you know, there's very little uh, concise information. It's not like uh, the army managed to capture one of these terrorists. Uh, they all were killed in the assault. 
And so it's going to take some time, I think, uh, before all the dead bodies are accounted for and identified as to who was a terrorist and who was not. But um, the BBC was taken around um, the school building and was told by the, uh, an army major general that there were seven um, assailants. Uh, now, you know, again, uh, we don't know. Uh, he, he was very, um, uh, he didn't quite know exactly what had happened and admitted it. So I think it's going to take some time for the military to piece all this together. Now, the Pakistani journalist Ismail Khan, writing in Dawn, says that security officials have told him that the attackers were guided from somewhere in Afghanistan by Umar Nare, who belongs to the Tariq Gidhar group of TTP. Apparently, the same security official told Ismail Khan that these attackers could very possibly have been Uzbeks. If that's true, what would that suggest to you? Well, we know already that uh, there are large numbers of Pakistani Taliban who have taken shelter in the border provinces of Kunar and Nuristan uh, in eastern Afghanistan. Uh, they are linked up there with the Afghan Taliban, but also with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan. So, uh, and, and, and Chinese Uyghurs are there also in these provinces. So there's a large, uh, and, and these provinces are not under the control uh, of the Afghan government. It's a free-for-all area, uh, very difficult terrain, etc. Even the Americans had, ba uh, had abandoned it quite, quite uh, early on. Um, now, uh, General Rahil Sharif, the army commander in Pakistan, has been to Kabul today, uh, and clearly he has laid out uh, his suspicions and fears about um, the uh, uh, Pakistani Taliban plotting and planning attacks from Afghan soil. Now, the, uh, the, the, the major Taliban commander, the Pakistani Taliban commander, Mullah Fazlullah, is also based there. And this does um, um, certainly suggest uh, uh, something very sinister, because Mullah Fazlullah was the uh, commander in the Swat Valley five years ago, who ordered the shooting of Malala Yousafzai, the uh, young Pakistani girl who last week won the Nobel Peace Prize. And the fact that Mullah Fazlullah may well be behind this attack on a school, once again, is another kind of signal that um, he rejects whatever Malala Yousafzai has been talking about, the need for education and girls' education and other things. So there are many elements to this factor that clearly the Taliban wanted to humiliate uh, uh, the army by attacking its school and killing the children of army soldiers and officers. And at the same time, I think there was this uh, uh, continuing threat uh, uh, to Malala Yousafzai. And uh, the fact that it may have been planned and plotted in Afghanistan should come as no surprise to the Pakistani authorities, because that has been happening for a couple of years now. Now, the statement by the Taliban spokesperson claims that this was revenge for Operation Zarbe Azab. The statement says, and I'm quoting, we want the army to feel our pain because they target our families. Is this a sign that the army operations in North Waziristan are hurting the Taliban and pushing them to take this sort of desperate action? I think, I think, I think that is true very much. I mean, I think there are several reasons um, behind this. The first is, yes, the... Uh, the Taliban are hurting. The army is claiming that um, over 1,200 Taliban have been killed since June uh, in this operation that is taking place in North Waziristan. Now, the Taliban say that uh, most of the casualties are civilians and most of them are our women and children. And so one can clearly see a connection here with the Taliban trying to kill so many uh, children of, of army officers and soldiers, uh, wanting revenge and retaliation. Um, for what uh, they have been uh, suffering uh, 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 at the hands of uh, military bombardments and other such things. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the other important factor um, is that uh, uh, the Pakistani Taliban uh, are very fragmented and very divided at the moment. Um, many of the groups who are still fighting the Pakistan army are not under the command of Mullah Fazlullah, um, they're under separate commanders, and uh, this fragmentation uh, 
um, has, has been played up a lot by the Pakistan army and by the media here. And, and I, what this act is trying to demonstrate is that um, the Taliban are still one, that they can still mount um, a very uh, vicious attack in the heart of Peshawar. And remember, this attack took place in the heart of uh, one of the largest cities in Pakistan, which means that um, they have the capacity to uh, smuggle in arms, ammunition, fighters, and they probably have cells inside the city itself. Yeah. So I think what, you know, it, it, this, the consequences of this attack, I think, will be analyzed uh, for many weeks and months to come. And they, it, it has been a very complex attack. Um, but yes, I, I think on, on the ground, what we are seeing is a shift in um, uh, uh, the relationship between Pakistan, Afghanistan, and the Americans. I think the uh, Pakistanis have made a commitment that this offensive that they have launched is not a sort of two-track policy where uh, okay. they're differentiating between good and bad Taliban, but all the Taliban are being targeted. And I think that is what has been hurting uh, the Taliban, which is why they launched this attack. I'll broaden the discussion in a moment's time, but I want to stick for a while to the essential message you believe the Taliban are sending out with this attack. You wrote about it in the Financial Times today. It's clearly a message to the army that the Taliban is strong, they can retaliate, they can attack army schools in the center of a military containment in one of the bigger cities. Would this attack have rattled the army? Would a message from the Taliban to the army have gone across that worries the army? Look, I think, I think the Taliban aim was clearly to, to, to try and humiliate the army uh, um, and to demoralize them. But I think the, given the public response, I can only imagine what the response in the army must be. And that must be uh, a very tough, uh, we will hit you back uh, response. I don't think it will demoralize uh, the army at all. Okay. Uh, even though the public here is very shattered, I think there's there's really now much more uh, a commonality of views and agreement that the Taliban have to be got at. So um, I don't see this attack as, as being demoralizing. I think, you know, the other factor in this attack is that um, given Pashtun culture, and remember, you know, Peshawar is the capital of the Pashtun area in, in, in Pakistan, and the Taliban are themselves Pashtun, the Pashtun place a special emphasis on tempting women and children during wartime. This is a tribal society. They, they, they fight each other frequently. But there's a part of the culture is to protect women and children. So this attack by Pashtuns on what probably is largely Pashtun children is seen as a specially horrendous um, uh, attack on Pashtun culture by the, by the Pashtun Taliban. And so um, again, there I see real horror amongst uh, uh, conservative and traditional uh, Pashtun people okay. and the population that um, women and children are not even safe. A lot of the teachers uh, in the school were women. The principal was a woman who was shot dead um, in her room. Uh, and other teachers were women who were also killed. Does this mean, therefore, as a follow-on to the point you just made, that the stock and standing of the militants and the, these particular Taliban amongst the Pashtuns will actually have sunk badly? That a lot of sympathy and support they may have had, they've now lost as a result of attacking women and children. That this could reverberate badly on them? I, I, I think this will reverberate very badly on them. Um, I think we're seeing the signs of that already um, uh, around the country, the response today. Uh, whole country was standstill. Special prayers were held everywhere. Candlelight vigils have been held last night, and again tonight they will be held. Um, so I think you know people have been really um, uh, very badly uh, affected okay. and horrified by this. And I think uh, this is going to deal a, a blow to uh, many Pakistanis who were actually uh, kind of sympathetic to the Taliban or believe some of the conspiracy theories that the. These are not Muslims, that these are Hindus or Christians or, or people of other nationalities who who launching these terrorist attacks. I think it's very clear to, to, to those skeptical Pakistanis now that these are um, uh, 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 Taliban, these are Pashtuns, these are Pakistanis, um, and, and, and they have killed uh, children of their own uh, country.
Now, in your Financial Times article that appeared today, you identified three messages that the Taliban is trying to send out. The first was to the army, which we've discussed. The second was a message to Malala Yousafzai, which you mentioned a little while ago, where you said the Taliban rejects the education Malala is advocating, particularly for girls. But there was a third message you believe the Taliban is also sending out. And this is how you put it in your article. You said the ongoing offensive by the Afghan Taliban in Kabul and other cities in Afghanistan is now being matched by a similar offensive in Pakistan. Does that mean that the terror that is experienced in Pakistan and Afghanistan could actually increase substantially, particularly with American and allied troops in Afghanistan coming down to just about 12,500 in January. Is that the third message, that terror will go up in these two countries substantially? I think, I think certainly, you know, what we're seeing in Afghanistan is a stepped up Taliban offensive. Remember, it's winter now, and traditionally, the Taliban stop their campaigns in winter. But um, in, uh, in, we've had 12 attacks in Kabul in, in the space of, of two or three weeks. And many attacks outside Kabul. Even today, there's been a major attack on a, on a bank uh, in Helmand province in the south of the country by the Taliban. Um, and also, I think, a message uh, to the Americans that uh, uh, even leaving 12,000 troops uh, compared to 100,000 that they had before, even leaving that number of troops is not ac acceptable to the Taliban. So, um, and, and I think, you know, the, the, the Pakistani Taliban are very much aware of uh, what their Afghan brothers are doing, and, and they want to match it, and they want to um, uh, show that uh, the Pakistani Taliban are not okay. inactive. Uh, while their Afghan brothers are, are carrying out this offensive. Now, at the press conference which the Prime Minister addressed after the all parties meeting today in Peshawar, he announced that all the parties together had agreed to set up a committee, and this committee, within a brief one week, will come up with a national plan to fight terror. Will that national plan supersede Zarb e Azab, or is it intended to add and strengthen to it? You know, unfortunately, there have been many such attempts. When Nawaz Sharif became prime minister last year, he, 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 he set up a committee. He had many people come in and discuss a whole national security strategy. There was talk about a national security council, which would be fully staffed so that it could be with uh, people from intelligence and experts, uh, so that it could deal with uh, terrorism strategy would fall and nothing happened um, uh, you know at the end of the day absolutely nothing happened and and the whole idea was was left to rot and um, I just hope and and in between there have been other attempts to form a national strategy uh, none of them have worked out uh, I just hope that uh, this is this this effort now is going to be taken more seriously uh, of course some cynics are saying that you know Whenever you want to defer something or delay something, you set up a committee. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is a very uh, a traditional thing in both India and Pakistan. I just hope that uh, um, we, the, the government does come up with a national strategy. I, it can't be done in a week. It has to be done um, uh, uh, more slowly and more methodically. Okay. Um, and it has to have the army and the intelligence agencies all fully on board. And uh, it's not clear, frankly, at this stage, uh, whether that is going to happen. Let's focus briefly on Zarbe Azab, which has been in operation for some five, six months. It was launched in North Waziristan by the army in June. Writing for the BBC on the 9th of December, you said that the earlier belief that Pakistan was giving refuge and support to Al-Qaeda and the Afghan Taliban, and the second belief that the offensive in North Waziristan has failed to capture or kill any prominent militant leader, both those beliefs, you said, have decisively changed in the last few weeks, particularly after General Raheel Sharif's visit to Washington recently. What are your reasons for saying that this change in perception has happened fairly decisively in the last few weeks? Well, I think what we have seen in the last few weeks is basically the following. Pakistan has killed a very prominent Al-Qaeda leader. This is the first Al-Qaeda leader uh, that uh, Pakistan has killed in more than uh, six, seven years uh, uh, b b before we were actually denying that Al-Qaeda was still based 
in, in, in Pakistan. Uh, the Americans followed up by killing another Al-Qaeda leader on Pakistani soil. Um, and, and, and since then, uh, uh, General Rahil Sharif has spent 10 days in Washington. He seems to, I think, have convinced the Americans that uh, the, the army offensive is aimed at all Taliban, not selective Taliban, in which some are let off the hook and others are killed. Um, and, 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 and that includes the Haqqani network, which has been a bane and a, and a terror for the Afghan government and for the Americans. And, and what we have seen in response is that the Americans have been using drone attacks against the Pakistani Taliban based in Afghanistan. Now, this is exactly what the Pakistanis have been asking for, for many months and years. And it never happened before, because clearly the Americans were only willing to do this as a kind of reward or as a kind of uh, incentive if the Pakistanis would go after all the Taliban. So it seems that for the first time, the Pakistanis are going after all the Taliban, and the Americans are now uh, facilitating uh, 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 the, the uh, Pakistan's own war by killing off Pakistani Taliban who are based in Afghanistan. Let me so I think what we're seeing is, a, is, is definitely a shift in attitudes of all three countries. Let me pick up on your point that the Pakistanis are now going after all Taliban. They're not differentiating between good and bad Taliban. That was a point Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif actually made at that press conference this evening. Are there then chances that this new vigorous approach against the Taliban and against Al-Qaeda will also translate into a similar tough response against groups like the LET and Jesh, which target India? No, I don't see that happening for the time being, unfortunately. Um, I, 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 I wish it, you know, it was so. But I don't think the army, which has developed something like 140,000 troops now uh, along um, uh, the border with Afghanistan, and, uh, and you know, taking part in this offensive in North Afghanistan, um, I don't think that they can uh, match this kind of uh, 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 action that they're doing um, against, uh, uh, against groups like LET and others. Um, relations, as you know, with India have been stalled very badly uh, ever since the uh, uh, swearing in of uh, Prime Minister Modi and, and the meeting with Nawaz Sharif. Um, since then, relations have, have, have gone down. There's been shooting on the border. Um, there's been attempts to disrupt the elections in Kashmir uh, by militant groups. Um, I hope that this gesture now of Prime Minister Modi, the two-minute silence in Parliament, the two-minute silence in the Indian schools, and, and the telephone call to, between the two Prime Ministers will somehow reinvigorate uh, um, uh, a dialogue between the two. I think both countries desperately need to talk to each other. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately um, uh, something will have to be done about the groups in Punjab who uh, uh, aim not so much at Afghanistan, but more, in, more at Kashmir and India. Um, uh, but, you know, whether that will take, I, you know, I don't see that taking the shape of a military offensive. I think it will take the shape more of a uh, perhaps a political dialogue and some kind of okay. alternatives being offered to some of these militants um, rather than a, a, a kind of military offensive, um, which would be extremely okay. difficult to do. At the moment, anyway, it's not going to, nothing much is going to happen with the LEC simply because I think uh, the army and the government is too preoccupied uh, with the uh, Taliban on the western border. You said two very important things. I want to pick up on both of them briefly. First to do with the LET in Jesh. You're suggesting that whereas the old distinction between good and bad Taliban has ended, there is now going to be a new distinction between bad Taliban altogether and acceptable or good Hafiz Saeed, acceptable or good LET, acceptable or good Jesh. That attitude and differentiation will continue now between Taliban on the one hand and LET, Jash and Hafiz Saeed on the other who all target India? No, I, I, I don't think you can you say, you can make that differentiation that somehow, you know, LET is going to be termed as, as, as good Taliban. Um, I think there's, a, there, there's an acknowledgement that uh, uh, Asians with Hindu 
clearly it can't happen without um, uh, something being done about LAT. Uh, so, you know, I think there's an acknowledgement in the military, in the political circles, that um, clearly we have to deal with all the groups uh, in Pakistan uh, because they all pose a potential threat. Some pose a direct, a direct threat like the Taliban, other, others pose perhaps a more long-term threat. Um, but uh, uh, I think there is this acknowledgement and, and remember that, you know, the previous military commander, General Kehani, uh, more, now more than two years ago, um, said that the real threat to Pakistan is not India, but it is in terrorism. Now, that was a very significant statement. He never did anything about it. He never launched any offensive in Waziristan or anywhere else. It's been left now to his successor to implement that uh, philosophy. If that philosophy is true, then um, it, 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 we, we have to consider all the extremist groups as being a potential threat to the nation state of Pakistan. And, um, you know, but clearly you can't deal with all of them in one go. Uh, uh, they have to be staggered and different groups will need different responses. And so the response to the LET will be later and secondary. The response to Taliban is first. A quick yes or no to that. Yes, uh, I think that's probably true. One other thing, you mentioned the response from India, the fact that there was a two-minute silence in Parliament, in both houses of Parliament, all Indian schools had a two-minute silence first thing in the morning at their assemblies. The Prime Minister rang up your Prime Minister and expressed his sympathy and support. And then, in fact, in a statement the Indian Prime Minister has issued, he says that this is a moment for our two countries to join hands to decisively and comprehensively defeat terrorism. How has this response altogether taken from India gone down in Pakistan? I think people are still digesting uh, what he said. I mean, uh, remember that uh, how low the relations have been in the past few months. Uh, and and uh, uh, this is the first, if you like, uh, uh, positive gesture that Pakistanis have heard from Prime Minister Modi. So I think, you know, we, we haven't had yet a reaction from the Foreign Office, from the government. Uh, normally there would be a very prompt reaction. Uh, I think, uh, I think the, 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 uh, the government is digesting this and, um, and, and see 